let's let's move into buy, hold, sell. Uh, there's a, a bit to talk about today, but some obvious ones. We'll talk about the buyers first. Carpets acquired. Oh, it's a West Tiger to kick things Ooh. off, and I love seeing a West Tiger at the top of the buy list. Lachlan Galvin, what a man. What a man. A um, bit of Adam Dewey about this bloke, but minus 60-odd break even. Can you, can you pass that up? I mean, you, you wouldn't have to buy him if you listen to the Insight Show in the preseason. We all have him. <laughs> yeah, we all started with him. wasn't too bad from us. That's one of the better ones we've had, Matrix. That was... Um, that's the question. Like, you know, Max Plass, another one getting around. Like, he's 270 with a minus break even starting at lock. And the people are like, we just, I feel like this is a Appy, not Appy, this is like a Lussic, um, uh, Lussic Levi situation where it's like, what do you do? Like, where do you go? I probably lean to Galvin just with the better job security and the better, better not better floor, but like better ceiling. Um, yeah, he looks really good. Like, really, really good. I'm trying I mean, to get with, too with- yeah, you, you said bad, well, not as good of a floor, but I mean, he's basing 35, which is bloody good for a 5'8". Like, metrics, yeah, is, like, it, obviously, it, the hard less... To compare it, hard to compare it with a, with a lock, but yeah, he's also right. 70k cheaper, so... Matty, we're obviously Tiger's bias. Uh, you know, are we talking out of turn here, or do you agree? Lock it in, Eddie. No, it's... um. It's a good play. Like, honestly, uh, what I saw on the weekend really impressed. Um, honestly, the question at this stage is, do I play him? And that's not something I had him as a genuine, let's save some money in 5 eight and um, and spend up for blokes like deal bags and everything. And it's been a great treat and a great surprise. You could play him a lot of weeks, I think. That's why I, that's why I highlighted this comment from Ian Johnson. I wanted to ask you boys, like, we all think he's a must-have. Is he a play from now moving forward, even without the carnage? Like, is, is he a play without the carnage? He's play with the carnage. Of course, with the carnage, uh, but in a regular week. Like, early season. Early season, bars. yes. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I think, obviously, as we start to see a little bit more form and, and get a little bit more of an understand, or even maybe upgrade to some guns, I, I don't know. But yeah, I reckon, I, I said to Maddie on the phone earlier today, because um, he likes to call me on the way home. It's like I'm his wife. He gives me a buzz to let me know that he's okay. Oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> hopefully she's not watching um like he I, I honestly think that you could make three to four hundred k out of galvin this year minimum i reckon he could be that wow. guy that you see it maybe we could see him crack five to six hundred k that's hot i think that's five can, i think he said two or three hundred but like yeah i, think I just made it spicy for the pot. Like four hundred k is six hundred thousand that's a lot of money um let's but see I how got, close i get a guy i think could get to 600k based off recent form kai pierce paul uh my love interest from the preseason has finally materialized earlier than what i thought which is really nice so i I get something right but he looks really good i had the poor week last not last week the week before we got 39 in 80 minutes but got the 43 the 40 before he just looks like he's gonna hit kp with one of those offloads and put him straight through uh it'll only be a matter of time i think what jacko hastings analysis of the situation was that he's gonna be special is true Looks really good. Dylan Lucas named at 18th man. But even if Dylan Lucas does come into the side, not worried considering Tyson Frizzell moved to the middle of the park last week and Lucas came on and played on the right edge. But Barry Tilly came out and said today that they've picked Brody Jones because they do want that ball playing middle and they don't want to have Frizzell be that and, and lose the explosiveness and the ability that he has on the right side. So I think wheels up, lock it in, KPP. I've, I've made it. I think I'll make that move this week. I think there's a, a couple of two RFs that are ready to go, uh, ready to move on. So, yeah, that, it seems like the move this week. At 390K, he could very quickly be 500K and kind of be then questionable as to where, how much more cash he's going to make. So what uh, what about Liam Henry? Um, Matrix, sorry, just, uh, I think... We'll sorry, go ahead, Liam, Josh. Before we get to Liam Henry, I, I do like... I think there was some feedback on the uh, live stream that we don't answer comments enough. So trying to make more of a concept to answer them. Um, Ian Johnson says, Caesar kicked a few goals last week, end of the game. Has he won the kicking or is Abby Appy just cramping? Um, Appy was dying. He had yep. very bad gastro and he was off, I think. I think he only played 65 minutes. So that's probably why Caesar was kicking. Um, I wouldn't it's be... probably the best summary here from Justin. <laughs> is, yeah, Appy was just worried about <laughs> shitting himself. Um, fair. Fair call. Champion. But yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> be worried about Appy's kicking if you were looking at bringing him in this way. He isn't in our buy, hold and sells, but if you were you know, pick him up, we can't say no. But just wanted to highlight that one before we do jump into probably the best front row forward in the game at the moment. Yeah, Liam Henry. Uh, Matrix is. I'll, I'll give him this one. 
um, because he was all about front row forward two being cheap this year and just ran in with one primo front row forward and just went, you know what, the rest can be spuds. And one of these spuds has turned out to be Liam Henry, who is probably just one of those lock and load guys now that's going to make you some good coin and he's playable every single week, Matty. So go on, have a little brag. The brave. So, um, yeah, look, like you, you add a heap of guys on the bench and you hope that it works out. Uh, Liam Henry has worked out. Um, look, I'm obviously not comparing him to Jermaine Hopgood, but... You, you did say the group chat. Jesus, that was that was a big one. That was spicy. I didn't mean that one to see the light of day. But, like, it just <laughs> seems like at the moment, everything seems to be going right um, with some injuries at, at Penrith. And Liam Henry's security seems really good. He's playing really good when he gets the minutes. Look, there will be a time that we move off Liam Henry, but right now for the foreseeable future, he could be a play every week for four weeks, like for the next four weeks. Yeah. I, when I look at his stats from this year, he has had 42 points in base on average, one point in evade and one point in negatives. And that is it. If that isn't yeah. meat and potatoes, I don't know what is. That's not even meat and potatoes, I reckon. The thing is, the thing is that's, like, that's fun. That's yeah. fun when you're that, that's fun when you're two hundred and thirty k, but like not when you're three hundred and something for for like Morgan Smith is. But also like another huge thing for Henry is they've named uh, Laurie, but they've also named Mav Gaia, who's been playing edge in New South Wales Cup. So you know Liotta doesn't play big minutes. Liam Liam Henry, uh, Lindsay Smith only plays about forty forty five. Like I think there's good minutes here for Henry. I think he's an absolutely serviceable play. I'd be shocked if he didn't get you like forty eight points. Well, he's played, what, 34 minutes in game one, 30 in game two, 42 in in game three last week, which I think is probably more realistic than what we're going to see over the next four weeks. And Agent Cheese here has um, said that Liam Henry is the same as when you're told to eat your vegetables. You're not happy, but it's for a reason. Um, Exactly. Just just play him. It's not fun. It's not sexy. In saying that, though, uh, round two, bombed a try. I think there was a kick put through from uh, Cleary. And Aman and I were like, erupting and then he just dumped over the line. So, hey, maybe there is, you know, a little bit of seasoning there with your vegetables with it when it comes to Liam Henry, but I'll, I'll get all point. my seasoning in other positions. Thanks. Not <laughs> exactly. front row forward. Exactly. Yep. exactly. All right. Galvin, KPP, Henry, lock him in, but let's talk about the players we should be holding this week. Oh. This might ruffle some feathers. It will. Guaranteed it will. Nathan Cleary is in the hold list for round four. Now, Josh, you might want to take the reins on this one. I'm I'm 100% on board with this. He's staying in my team this week, but fuck, there is no one there that I feel I'm confident sorry. replacing I'm him sorry. with. You've just given me the most controversial opinion of the podcast, said, I agree with it, it, but it's, it's all on you. Can you please explain? <laughs> no, look, okay. people, people are, I think they're blowing the timeline out of proportion. Like you're hearing four weeks and you think, oh, that's a long time to be out. It's really just two weeks because you had the buy and you were never selling for the buy anyway. I think with – look, if Mitch Moses wasn't didn't go down, I don't think Nathan Cleary is in the whole section. Um, we have a different debate there, but there's no one. I mean, Mitch Moses is probably the next best and then it was probably Jerome Hughes and now Moses is out and Hughes is on a buy. I'd rather just hold for a week, assess what Nico does and then sell Nico if you have to or – Worst case scenario, you just take a, an AE in round five, get a free loop, and it's not the end of the world. Like, it's one position. So, for me, I think Clear is a, a fine hold. He isn't the halfback out of him and Hines. I'd be selling if you had them. And obviously, we're not selling Hines this week, but we'd do it probably next week for, yeah, Jerome Hughes, if you like that sort of uh, flavor in your coffee. And there was a slim chance, Matty, that maybe Cleary would be back next week. And when I say slim, like 5%, 10% chance that Cleary might line up again next week. I just don't know. Um, What are your, what are your thoughts, Matty? Are you selling or holding? Look, I, I've toyed with both and I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I would have went to Moses. I would have been completely fine with Moses the way that Parramatta have their draw at the moment. But look, the only other guy that I would maybe consider is maybe a Luke Brooks. Dare I say, I know I'm sitting here with a bunch of supporters. The only, no, honestly, honestly, like he's got a 20 break even. Honestly, honestly, he was probably man of the match last week and scored 60. That's my issue with Brooks. I think he scored 45. That's the worst thing. But um, (laughs) 
No, I, I don't know. Like, I just think that maybe he's somebody that once Galvin dries up, you can move him back down to 5'8 and, and hold him for a little bit longer because he has looked really good. Um, he has looked like a bit of a catalyst in that offense. He's going to have some good, some really good games. And if there was anyone, it's probably him because I can't find – I would love a halfback cheapie. I would love to just grind a halfback for three weeks, but there's not one. That's the problem. That's the thing here. Like, I want to highlight Ian's. Uh, Ian's obviously a, a great contributor to everything we do. He's always in the comments. He says, if you're running Hines and Cleary, Hines has the buy next week, so you have no half. And, and whilst I agree, I don't think Cleary is the one to sell out of the two of them. I think you yeah, suck I it up with. I think you suck it up with Hines this week. And if you if you were desperate to sell one of them and not cop the AE, I, I don't think it's Cleary. Um, I think him post buy against the Dogs is the the place to be, and that's exactly what Kate says. Finally, a podcast saying, "Hold Cleary, he'll be back against the Dogs." But I'm biting my nails playing Hutchinson and. Yeah, look, Hutch, I mean, I've got some good stats about Hutch coming up um, with sort of the dogs and what are they called? Rabbits matchup. So Hutch may not be the worst, but I think holding Cleary is absolutely fine. Um, as I do think holding Grant's fine. I know a lot of people are selling Grant to Appy. Sure. I'm not that guy. Like, I'm not the guy that's going to say sell Grant to Appy. Um, that's just mean. Nass is back next week, which is a huge inclusion for Grant. Gives them a lot of go forward as well. So I'm not a Grant seller. Personally, I can see why people do it, and it's not something where I'm saying don't do it. It's just me personally. I'm not. I'm not that guy. He based fifty-seven last week against the Knights. Played eighty minutes. Based fifty-seven. The create just isn't there. So when we look at his stats last year, I think his create was at like fifteen points per game. Um, he had thirteen tries this last year. So the and, and nine tries. So we know the attack is going to come, but the Storms' draw to start the season was putrid, and we spoke about that in the preseason. Yeah, we 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 Matrix and I um discussed this on the on the podcast on Sunday. Like we I think we project him at like a 58 60 for the first like mm. 5 weeks and that's exactly yep. what he's doing. So in our mind, like from the three of us, nothing's changed for us to sell him. It's not like he's pumping at 45. We knew what we were getting ourselves into for the first 5 6 weeks and it's going as expected. I so think- yeah, I mean Appy's killing it. I projected Appy at a 70 and he's going well above that. But for me, it's just like nothing's changed on Grant for me. I want Grant and Appy, but it's not via selling Grant first. I think that the thing with people that are doing that, it's more how good Appy's been more so than how bad Grant is. And mm-hmm. I agree with Josh. Like maybe you would just try and do the other ways. Uh, but like Appy's been good and he's got that 100 in his rolling average. I don't expect him to score 100 every week. He was phenomenal last week. But realistically, like, yeah, giving Appy his props, it's more Appy being a buy than Grant being a sell. I think it's getting them both. Yeah, I think Radio Buckley here sums it up. Like, Grant and Appy should be the major goal, not Grant or Appy. And I think Grant and Appy are the goal, but it's not via Grant to start with, I think, because you want Grant back in. So why not build towards Appy? Like, why not build yourself a kitty to get Appy? rather than having to spend more than one trade that you need to on getting them both in eventually. For sure. Let's talk Burbo. He is the third on this hold list. Now, obviously, people are probably a little bit of panic stations going on with uh, Ben Trebojevic. I'm holding him. Um, obviously, the, the drop-off from 72 to 33 and 19 is is why people are panicking. Only 61 minutes last week. Um, you know, a pretty low base. He does rely on attacking stats, but... Matrix, is there any love for Burbo this week? And are you playing him this week? Because, I mean, they play the Dragons. It's it's actually quite a nice matchup for Burbo and Turbo and Manly in general. It is a nice matchup. I'm going to be holding him, as it suggests. But I'm not sure I have the confidence in playing him. Just what I've seen the last couple of weeks. Like, I think that first week was phenomenal. I think in the trials, he was really great. Um, but he might be in danger of losing his spot the way that he's been the last couple of weeks. Uh, and, you know, there's plenty of other guys that can take his spot at Manly. Manly are a really deep team. I just don't oh, – why is it this week that you have to trade Burbo? He's got a um, he's got a 39 break even. He's a guy that will probably get 40 and cover it, and I'll still be disappointed because I expect more. But, yeah, like just do it another week. Death um, yeah, I I don't know. I'm generally quite opinionated, but I generally don't know. 
Um, 39 break even, it's, it's steep to cover for him, uh, especially in 55, 60 minutes. I have a feeling that he may eventually get dropped for Corey Waddell. Um, the negatives are creeping in. That's a big thing. Like I, I, I would need to pull up NRL SE stats, but I would assume um, with the smaller fields in Vegas, the fact that everything was a little bit more condensed, it condensed. he played the game of his life. Um, and so, yeah, let's, let's look at the negatives because we have 0-0 zero, zero minus 4. Uh, evade was down massively from 16-4-2. Uh, and then you have obviously scoring, but the base was the concerning thing. So 39 base in 72 minutes doesn't equate to a 21 base in 61 minutes. And I think with a more open game, that base isn't going to be there as well. I'm debating selling it myself. I probably won't because it, it doesn't allow me to get the cash cow that I really want this week. But I'm not locked into not holding him through because I probably won't be playing him. I know we have heaps of carnage and heaps of people out, but I probably just don't have the confidence to play him. And he will be turfed quickly because I think that 71 has now dropped out of that rolling average. So we're now relying on a 33 and a 19 for a guy that's going to be priced at probably two. What is he priced at now? 313. So next. This is the, yeah. Yeah. We're expecting way more from Burbo, I think, initially. But that's exactly the perfect reason as to why you don't really rely too much or bank too much on first-round scores. Because yeah. we've seen him go massive in round one. Everyone got excited. Everyone bought him. And, and fair play to you. You probably should have. But then we see a 33 and a 19, and then that cash quickly plummets. So it only takes him really one bad score again to be back under 300K. And that's that's the concern. We're back where we started with him. So, yeah, that, it is a question mark. <laughs> For me, basically, like for people wondering, like what I'm thinking, it's basically it's I hold Burbo, it's hold, it's I hold Burbo and get Semi Fainu, or I sell Burbo and miss out on Semi Fainu, but keeping two decent mid rangers. So for me, that's what I'm looking at. Um, or I mean, Burbo to Blaze Delonia early isn't out of the question for some people either. For sure. All right, let us move on to the cells this week. Pretty quick one, this one, which is always good. Uh, Tani Tuapiki is out concussion this week, and Chance Nickel Klukstar is due back round five. So there's every chance we're going to see him drop out of the team. CNK comes back in. So he is a sell. Tino, bit of a no-brainer. Done his ACL. Done for the year. Move him on if you have him. And Reese Walsh, I mean, how long is Reese Walsh going to be out for? We said, what, four to six weeks, I think it was, facial fracture? Yeah, yeah. I just, I just can't hold a like halfback is not the ceiling as what we thought it was going to be. So you can hold Cleary for a week, but fullback it's yeah. still producing massive scores. So I think if you had Cleary and Walsh, like Walsh is the one that has to go because fullbacks this year, even like the non-elite ones, are still doing so much better than the non-elite halfbacks. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So pretty, pretty self-explanatory there. Um, I did not do a transition video for the watch list. But anyway, we're going to do it. And it's criminal of me, but we'll work on that for next week. Um, I know, I know. I did, I did all right. But Blaze uh, Talangi is the first on the watch list. And when we, I guess maybe we should preface this by saying what constitutes the watch list. Um, obviously, someone who isn't on the bubble or someone who isn't due to rise in price or someone that you want to have another look at before you buy them. So Blaze Talangi, obviously, this is his second game. Matty, but obviously promising signs there for Blaze. He scored 60-odd in the centres, and now he's been named in, in the 5-8 jersey for Parra this week. Yeah, just look, before Matty, just think... before Matty goes on a tangent, I want to know, 5-8's his position as well. He's a natural 5-8. He played with Lockie Galvin through the school system as well. He's a 5-8, not a centre as well, so keep that in mind when you are buying him. Yeah, look, I think that he's just a guy that I will get in. Um, it doesn't have to be this week. It's so crucial. I don't need to save money anywhere at the moment. I've got nobody in the centers that I'm really at risk of losing a lot of money. Let's just wait a week. I'll get him. Even if he pumps out a 30, I think I'll still probably get him just with how long Moses is out. Um, but keep in mind there are blokes like RC and stuff that can. We probably expected him to them to take this spot. Um, so yeah, he can still lose his job, even though Mitchell Moses is out, but man, if he plays a right on the weekend, if Parramatta win, I think that he's my first ad next week. Yeah. The good thing is center, you're sitting on Jacob Gagai or something and you don't need the cash. You can go straight across to, to blaze Talangi and make some cash that we all hoped Gagai would make. Uh, or you can go to a peaky, hold him a week, and then you can go down to Talangi and free up hundred K. So there's, there's some benefits. 
it's fair. Oh, it's a ways. perfect perfect time, perfect time for an eighty minute center wing to come in because to a peaky, uh, Salmon's probably starting to cap out. Burbo, we've discussed, is starting to shit the bed a little bit. Uh, Gagai has been dead since round one. Like, it's a perfect time now to 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 jump on Blaze, whether it's this week or next week. I I can't talk you out of doing it this week because I'm also looking at it myself. So this week or next week, he'll be yeah probably the most popular purchase next week. I would imagine. I've got yeah, the real question. question. As a as a father, um, who calls their kid Blaze? No, I was gonna say like if you name your kid Blaze, like he has to be a certified footy gun. Like that's just a rugby league name, Blaze. Or a firefighter. Or a firefighter. Or a, firefighter. Or a, yeah, firefighter. <laughs> or a redhead. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, Matrix says the redhead. We're we're talking about genuine occupations, and he comes in with the hair color. Um, next next on the watch list, bit bit of Tigers biased. You can interchange these two between Fungal Bole or Justin Olam. We've elected to go Justin Olam just off the back of his great game, but and we already we already discussed Fungal Bole at length on Sunday show. Had a fifty seven base power. Price at four twenty available front row forward and to RF jewel, so he's worth looking at. But Justin Olam looks like he's back to his best. Probably just needed the move from Melbourne. Probably was time for him just to, you know, he's probably shutting up shop a bit. He just wanted to change, and I think he thought he looked really good. Yes, it's hard to put stock in the Tigers, and I, I said this on Sunday, Brano. I think we need to just calm down because I people quickly forget that we put sixty on the Cowboys, and then. Six weeks later, we got 70 put on us. So we just need to chill out a little bit. But Justin yeah. Ollum, 400 and what is that? 23K with a break even of sub zero. I think it's minus three. Um, yeah, I mean, if Ollum's running hard and he's he's linking out well with the halves, then a, a little stack with him and uh, Galvin could be tasty. Mm. I think it's him and Galvin. Don't mind it. Don't mind you don't it. play the Sharks uh, every week, so. Well, it's just confirmed because the Sharks only beat up on bottom eight teams. So, uh, yeah, I guess we're a top eight team then. Um, anyway, that's a that's a discussion for another you are day. At the moment. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're ninth, I mean, which is exactly seven, where we deserve to be. Seventeen teams. We cannot be a top eight team, and we could not be a bottom eight team as well. We could just be back to the rugby league neutral, ninth. which is you know the world is good when the Tigers are ninth. Everything is mm. everything is right in the world. I agree. Let's. Um, I want to skip the next one because this one's yours, Josh. But I'd love to hear from the resident Bronco, Xavier Willison, because obviously with with Payne Haas out, there seems to be some extra minutes there for Willison. We know he's a PPM beast. He played forty two minutes and scored fifty one on the weekend, which is massive and kind of what we expected for him if he gets the minutes. Now, do we see him getting forty two minutes again every single week while Haas is out? Yeah. Like, what else was going right for them? Uh, Willison was one of those blokes that come in and, and got the mo- the go forward, I suppose, against Penrith. People think that I hate Willison because I didn't think that he was a play at the start of the year. I just thought that maybe he would move into this 35-minute role through the middle of the year um, with all the forwards that we had. But, yeah, injury provides, and I think he'll be there all year. So I definitely think Willison is a buy. He he's great. He's sensational. The question with Willison is, if you're like me and maybe some others as well, if you have Hughes and Lenu sitting on your spine, I wouldn't be selling Lenu. I'd be selling Hughes because I think Lenu is your I think Lenu is your route to Curran in round six when you're moving him up. Because you don't want to sell Lenu and then have a bench of like or a front row forward of me, for example. May, Henry, Willison, Hughes, because then you're like, well, how do I get Curran up? And you have to trade out Hughes. And if he has a great game in like round five, you've got that cash in happening. So for me, I'd rather cut ties with Hughes now. If you're going to go Willison, I'd probably end up doing that next week as well. I also didn't realize how well he scored last week. 35 in base, six, uh, 18 in evade, minus two in negatives, which is fine for a kid on debut. Well, not bad debut, but you know what I mean? First game of the year. And yeah, 42, uh, 42 minutes is huge. Even if that's down to like, I don't know, 38. Like Willison yeah. still had the top PPM in all the comp last year with a 1.52. That was better than guys like Royce Hunt, better than guys like Terrell May, who are renowned of having amazing uh, PPMs. I'm just scrolling back through the Instagram page, trying to find the exact PPMs. But I know, I know he topped it last year for all qualifying players with a 1.52, which is absurd. So he's beating out guys like Luca Moretti with a 1.47, Tom Hazleton with a 1.41. And Royce Hunt and Terrell May, guys that we have as staples, you know, with 1.27, 1.31, he was up there with a 1.53. So 
minutes for him are no concern. It's a big body, gets through work. Even 35 minutes, I think he could be averaging, yeah, 42, 43. I, I like him as probably the next option in front row forward just because it's such a shit position at the moment. I think if you're looking for someone as a playable... You, you could play him every week, I think. And I, I feel own, comfortable playing him. All right. If you don't own Terrell May, is there a world where you just roll out Henry and Henry and X? Yes. Until until round six when Curran gets up, gets up there. Yeah. I reserve judgment to not comment. Because no, don't be against it. You know I hate it. You know I hate it. No, I don't. Honestly, that's that's all you need. Like, why do, are we? If you, if you can get ninety, trade, can get 90 points out of, if you can get ninety points out of Henry and Wilson, like, you're, huh. I'd take that to the bank. Realistically, like Terrell May, how much more is he going to score than Wilson? I'm I'm on board with this. Like, how he's going to get what? Let's just say yeah, best case scenario, we get sixty. He gets sixty, right? So Wilson gets fifty. But there's a 200k, 230k price difference between them. So that's technically based on starting prices, 23 points. So ideally, Terrell May needs to be 23 points better than Xavier Willison to be able to get your cash in terms of value, be able to get value for your money. So if you're looking to spend up elsewhere, I don't mind it. I think it kind of probably makes sense, doesn't it? And the, the 44 in Terrell May's rolling average now from last week is just not going to help that cash gen. Like, it'll still be fine, but it's not going to be like he's going to get the 600k in a matter of three weeks like that 44 will stunt it a little bit um so yeah if he has like another mid 50 score this week he's still great like he's still you know amazing but it's not like he's going to be 620 630k so you could definitely run henry and x i don't hate that at all until round six when Curran gets his jewel yep let's talk about connor watson interesting one on the watch list but um you you pop this in the chat and you were a fan i, kinda, I understand you, you the logic not I'm not a, no, I'm not a huge fan of Connor Watson coming off the bench, but you, you, your your logic gross, is there, yeah. so you can run with this one. I don't know. Sandra Smith's now out, so that 14 is now pretty much locked in for Watson. We know that um, Cheese doesn't play huge minutes. Uh, he scored as Price last week in his first game, so he scored 53. I think yeah, he had to try take that out, 35 or whatever it is. Um, Price at a three, 37, break even of 18. Definitely one to watch. He's not going to get out of your way, but does have a handy jewel. Does have that 2RF hooker jewel, which I think is really really handy having just a a guy that if you have in your team and if grant goes down appy goes down lussick just gets dropped like you've got cover there to move him up like he's not a priority buy this week but he's definitely a guy that i'm watching closely because i think he looked really good in his first game back to nrl in a year and a half and has been killing it in cup i think the minutes will slowly increase and yeah i mean also just a pure vibes pick i mean what a sexy man Matrix, anything to add? I hate it. I don't know. Like, I just... <laughs> <laughs> no, see, I like that. I'd rather you say you hate it than go, oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, no, I'm I'm not going to. But, like, yeah, it was one game. He's coming off the bench. I probably, like, need to see a lot more or a better rotation where Cheese goes to that middle for, for a lot longer and... He comes in also, at hooker. And also, Connor Watson is somebody I would love to see play more. I just don't know if it's going to happen in the next eight weeks. He played 52 minutes on the weekend. So, like, good minutes. I think the production will increase. But also, I think Jared Ray Hargraves just played, like, monster minutes because they were winning and it was his landmark game. Also, very devastated. He didn't get the goal kick at the end when they were up by a million. Wanted to see that happen. But I think JWH probably loses some minutes. And if Watson can pump out 55 and increase that base ever so slightly. You know, PPM of 1.02, but was inflated with the try at a 53. So take that down to a 13, which is 40 minus four more. So 36. Uh, if we can get that up to, say, 42 in base with the attacking threat that he has playing through the middle, I think there's definitely some uh, some love there. If he didn't have the hooker duel, we're not having this discussion. But yeah. I think is there enough jewels. minutes there for him if they're bringing in, uh, who was it? Uh, Brody Jones through the middle of the field. Obviously, that's a, a new inclusion to the bench now and, and how that forward rotation had looked. Do you think the minutes are still there for him considering Wait, what? that? Sorry, well, Brody, say, Brody Jones as of the night. Cotter Watson oh, yeah, plays for the Roosters. Yeah. I, like, I was like, what's Brody Don't Jones? Is, was, was there more TLT cards? Actually, you know Brody what? Jones? I'm probably just going to have to jump on fucking Connor Watson as an apology <laughs> now just to throw him <laughs> on my team. <laughs> I was like, like we've had, yeah, had cool. Him. Okay, I'll fix this. Um, so, yeah, no, I've just, done a great job. You just booted him, yeah, sweet. Um, yeah, just I just sent him for ten in the bin. <laughs> love that, love that. He's Can back. I come back? 
Yeah, can we switch back? <laughs> yeah, we need. Nah, there we go. One more. One for more. Fuck's sake, Matrix is yeah. taking the piss out of me now. There we go. Um, <laughs> It's all, um, right. it's all for entertainment. Yeah, Max Plath. Let, let's move off Connor Watson because that was way longer than I wanted to be. Uh, Max Should Plath. Be. Now, shut up. <laughs> Max Plath, 270K, break even of minus 16, has been named at lock again. I don't know what's happening with Ray Stone. I would have to double check on this. But the, the problem with Max Plath is he has so much appeal in round six when he gets that jewel and he moves up to 2RF. Um, but is he better than Galvin at 70K less? That's my, my dilemma. Unless you started with Galvin and you're just like, oh, I don't want Dylan Brown, then I can get behind it. But I, I'm not picking him over Galvin. That's you can't, can basically. You? Yeah, no, that's the only reason I sit there. Like, he's just not better than Galvin. He's great. He's just not better than Galvin. Is that what where you were going, Brenner? Yeah, yeah. It just minus 60-odd break even versus what? what's Max Plath's break even this week? Minus, six, minus 20? No, yeah, minus so, 16. I mean, look, he's also 70 more. And and also Raystone on the bench just kind of scares me off a little bit. Like I don't know what that looks like. Um, obviously Raystone started at thirteen before he ended up being injured and missing time. So yeah, oh, there's just too many question marks. But Plath, awesome player. Like if Raystone wasn't on the bench, I'd be all in on that. But the fact he's only five eight, he's five eight only for now. So you may as well just wait until he gets the jewel and then he becomes a consideration if he keeps that role. Of course. Yeah. Um, Raymond Vega, uh, or as Josh in the chat like to call him Bags, so which is that that we've just kept. Apple just changed it to Bags, and we we're like, all right, V Bags, it is. So yeah, Raymond Vega. Um, much, not much, much more to say here apart from being a the left winger at Manly is uh, not a bad spot to be. Yeah, can't argue with it. There's really, I, I mean, I don't see many people buying him this week, but. Definitely a uh, yeah, definitely a watch. I guess with Tommy Talao being in the reserves as well is is another question mark on him. Yeah. Um, does he hold that spot? Does he drop out for Tommy Talao if he's fit? Fuck, who knows? No, so nobody also, knows the answer. Really gross price as well, like three hundred thirty four k. You'd much rather that be like two seventy, a similar price to Talao. Uh, I think him getting hurt was the worst thing to happen to us because we had a, a way to get off Gagai for sixty k more. 